know, he gave up his life to save Freya, and uh, I just, you know, there, there, there is a lot of stuff. I mean, like it was one of those things. I wanted it to succeed, but it just, it just, it obviously got canceled for a reason. So it kind of fell flat. And I know I kind of use this as a basis, but the only witch show to survive and survive for like eight seasons was Charmed, and it wasn't necessarily because of star power, because really the only star in there, uh, at least for a little bit, was Shannon Doherty. But even after she was killed off, and uh, they brought in... Uh, uh, Rose McGowan? Thank you. When they brought Rose McGowan, you know, kind of popular, kind of known for, uh, at that time for a few years behind that, being uh, uh, Marilyn Manson's girlfriend, that sort of thing, you know? So, but the thing is, is they, they developed these characters, you know? Like, the way they brought Leo kind of... Uh, in in and out a little bit you know kind of developed to find out what he what what he was like what kind of a um a magical being he was that sort of thing and you know they 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 kind of filled some they filled some gaps really quickly and then they let others kind of build up but they built it up well i mean it went well with the story it fit the story but they were taking on a different demon like every week you know so and that's that's the thing is the fact that the the creators of the regular show were able to come up with so many like demons and like uh, for eight seasons, is you know, it's 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 a good. It's, it's I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. It's just a good. Well, maybe not talent, but I mean, uh, good on them to being able to keeping that creative through eight seasons. Yeah, absolutely. I hadn't. I periodically seen the show. One thing that always had stuck out to me was that they did do a thing, a villain of the week. I think that would have really helped Witches of East End. I don't think you know you're in your third or fourth season. You start really working off your own mythos that you created. You have right. to have that foundation with the the villain of the week. Uh, but one thing too was that I felt like when I had watched it from a distance that they had the Piper Leo story. It was not everything about the show, but it was nicely integrated into it where it didn't feel like oh man i'm being hit over the head with are they going to be together it felt much more stable than that am i wrong no no you're absolutely right totally agree with that totally totally agree with that because it was a it was a slow it was a slow build up right and you kind of saw it there and like and now of course it's one of those things that everybody's rooting for them but it was it was a it was a slow build but wasn't like on super slow mo if you know what i mean you know they kind of they got they got to the point uh about halfway through the first season almost towards the end so it took almost a whole season, but you know the the fact is they kind of started kind of they've built it up to that point for for the one season, so everybody kind of knows where everybody's at at this point, which that makes me a lot interesting. And <clears throat> doesn't mean that the the show is good. And the fact that like we just said, you no, know, they they fought a different demon every week, and that, that sort of thing. You no, know, and little by little, find a little bits and pieces about their history, but it wasn't all kind of dumped in you at once. But it wasn't it wasn't like kind of flashback, flashback, flashback. You know, it was kind of a little bit at a time. But it was perfect because that built because you know as their powers grew, you know, they learn they learn more and they learn this and they learn that you know and you know their their great 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 grandmother you know like uh, came came back for, came back from the past you know like and in, to 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 banish a demon that had done her wrong like you know hundreds of years ago sort of thing, but it was yeah. it was done well you know and that's why it lasted so long and that's why let stuff work is because they did they did smartly. Yeah, and I, they, they've had a really devoted fan base, and it's on syndication all the time, which speaks to its endurance. Uh, it, as I'm sad. I think witches had a lot of potential, and I just don't think it was fully realized. And you know, I, I haven't read the books that they're based on, but I, I, I got the sense that there was a lot to cull from. So right. I'm sure that the book fans are probably bummed they only got to t see two seasons of it realized. Yeah, I, I never read the books either. I just kind of kind of went with the show. I was like, oh, this looks cool. And kind of, I, I think I, I must have Googled it and just read a little bit. But it's like, oh, this, this could potentially be interesting. And I know, I, I, I obviously, there's like a lot of shows we watch, if they're comparable comparable and like characters, that sort of thing, you're going to hold to a certain standard, right? So exactly. you're going to, you're going to, you're going to try to like it, but, but at least, you know, you don't, well, at least I know some people like they, they do that, you know, and that's, that's uh, completely normal. But point being is a lot of them will kind of just be negative to the show right away before they even watch anything or only watch a few minutes and, you know, they give it a chance or they end up giving it a chance and they say, like, no, this show isn't, isn't that bad and you can compare it to that. But, you know, there are going to be obviously some differences and some, and some similarities. But this one, uh, I was like, like I said, I was kind of, kind of, I was holding it, kind of holding up a, a charms level sort of thing and I wanted it to do well and, and like, like you said, no, it seemed really interesting when it started. 
But then they just kind of started kind of going to the left and back to the right. And then they started zigzagging and up and down. I just kind of got a little, uh, a little frustrated with it. Yeah, I, I agree. I hope I do hope that they would will at least do fans the benefit of maybe doing a two hour made for you know because Lifetime movies are so popular and they already have this built in audience just to give us a little closure. You know what I'm saying? I do, but likelihood of that happening are uh, pretty slim. <laughs> I'll keep hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's a. Uh, I was reading this the other day and talked a little bit about it yesterday actually on the Bones and Me Banter Hour is the drummer from ACDC, Phil Rudd, was arrested for driving under the influence, uh, possession, uh, and uh, he was uh, initially uh, charged with uh, hiring, uh, pretty much doing a murder for hire. And uh, Yeah, but he was cleared today. It was like top page of the Rolling Stone, at least on the app it was. So Phil Rudd is cleared, but the alcohol thing... <clears throat> I'm not necessarily surprised just because he's been having problems with uh, uh, alcohol for a number of years. So I'm like, I'm not surprised. Like, I mean, I'm glad he's not being arrested. I'm glad he didn't, I know, <laughs> do a murder for hire sort of thing. Because uh, <clears throat> that would have been really, just really beyond bizarre and weird just because, you know, he's in his middle 60s, like, so close to 70. You no, know, he's been a rock and roll star for like about for almost 40 years or pretty much close to 40 years and all of a sudden you know he's being arrested for drunk driving possession and murder for hire and i was very shocked when i heard it and I, i'm very curious because now he's uh, been cleared what put that tipped them off to the suspicion that he'd done a murder for hire well, that's the thing is i'm not absolutely sure like i, cause I kind of I, I skimmed through it and um i i didn't see it doesn't mean it's not in there but yeah i just i i I don't know why why or what was going through his mind i mean well something like that you never know though really right true it could have just been you know he was intoxicated and just rambling on but that is bizarre yeah well you know stranger things that have happened (laughs) so it's uh it's like i said it's it's a bit of a shock but uh obviously with some of these rock stars not exactly out of the realm of possibility hmm I know it's bad to say, but some of the um, rock stars, artists out there, I wouldn't be surprised if I heard some something along the lines of that or similar to that, them getting in trouble for. Yes. I, I would say that it was much more shocking when Reese Witherspoon was arrested than <laughs> hearing about this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. That was very shocking. Uh, well, there you go right there. So, yeah, um, like I said, that was, uh, that was uh, a little odd. Now, the other thing uh, I noticed, and I ran it, I'm pretty sure I ran a little bit about la- last week. Um, yeah, actually, no, I know I did. Anyways, okay, if you remember me saying that uh, Metallica took up residency this past week on uh, Craig Ferguson's late night show, and the week before that, Foo Fighters did it on Dave Letterman. And it was cool when, when the food fights, like I said, really enjoyed it. And then I was like, oh, copycat Metallica is doing it on the Craig Kilborn. And then the other day in the paper, guess what? U2 <laughs> is now uh, signed on for a week for residency on The Tonight Show. Oh. So pretty sure it's The Tonight Show. Anyways, I just like, it's like, is this the new thing now? Are we, do, are we all doing this, guys? Is this like a new fad? And I, <laughs> so I'm just, just a, a, a little... A little annoyed with it because you know like people watch these late night shows you know for the different comedians actors coming on every night you know or a couple variety maybe some some like you know animal guy like i can't remember the guy who's on johnny carson right now but i'll think of it uh soon anyways no 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 we're not a psychic that no they had that regular pet guy come on um oh john hannah is it john hannah is that it? Uh, I, I don't think so. And this is going to kill me now. And I can't think of it. But I'll keep talking. Maybe I'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it's it's that sort of thing. And you want to see a different band every night. Whether you like them or not. No, it's nice to have a different band. 
doing one week, yeah, it's all right. I mean, like I said, obviously I'm partial to the Foo Fighters, but they switched it up. They didn't play all their songs. They played some Led Zeppelin tunes and that sort of thing. You know, but normally people watch these shows uh, uh, just uh, to see a different band every night or who are the actors and comedians on that sort of thing. And uh, also, I can see one of the reasons why the Foo Fighters did was for promotion because their new album, Sonic Highways, comes out in a few days. So yeah. I can see doing that for promotion. No, good idea. And uh, but when I see Metallica, it's like it's almost like they're they're just doing it to do it, and that's. And I just think it's uh kind of kind of stupid, like, you know, like we played all these major huge stadiums like uh, around the world, literally, you know, over the ocean, the whole deal. Got I don't know how many platinum records and you know how many like millions and millions of dollars they have, but they got to do something like this just because they don't want to feel left out. It's pretty much uh, my my opinion behind it. kind of got started it seemed last year on uh late night with jimmy fallon when he had pearl jam on there for the week they had this big thing about you know pearl jam week and then it caught on it seemed and um i think that everyone else is kind of copying that and fallon is i think just using it too on the tonight show now you know what i forgot about that but uh just in general i i just i just you know i'm not down with that i think it's i think it's a bad idea. I mean, I know like the Foo Fighters were promoting their their album coming out in a few days, and like I said, I do like the band. It was it was, it was kind of cool, but you know, maybe if you're gonna do something like that again, maybe just two days is good. You know, you only do it through the entire week. <laughs> yeah, it gets to be over over you know over exposure. Exactly. So I mean, and that that's uh, that's my uh, opinion on that. <laughs> so. Um. Other than that, there wasn't really anything uh, that really stood out, at least besides uh, those few stories between uh, Phil Rudd and the, these uh, week-long residencies on the late shows. Um, yeah, it's, I can't think of anything else that, uh, I, that I actually want to talk about from the news that was a little rock and roll news that, is, that was actually somewhat interesting sort of thing. So let's get into your blogs. Okay, well, we'll start off with... This week was uh, um, the CMA Awards, which is the Country Music Association Awards, and mm. I watched... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it was, uh, you know, I am a fan of country music. I know not everyone is, but just to briefly say that it was an, it was an okay show, but one thing I wanted to kind of talk about in my article, Five Takeaways, was just how... It was really not great, and the movement towards what the kids are calling bro country, uh, it just is really, <laughs> it is killing the genre. Literally every song was about getting drunk, watching women in tight jean pants, uh, riding around in a trunk, and uh, last but certainly not least, having a one night stand. I was like, wow, this is just, wow, can we talk about something a little different? And the <laughs> one girl who did have a different song, she won, but they had the big thing was they didn't even play her song on the friggin' radio. So <laughs> I know it was crazy. I I just was very tired of the whole affair. And Zach Brown band didn't even perform. Who are arguably one of the best bands around. Period. But in just in country, I think they didn't show up. I don't know why they didn't show up. But I think I think the lack of their presence kind of spoke volumes. That was my take, at least. Well, okay. Well, fair enough. But see, see, I'm all well, things. Not um, not all uh, rock shows or award shows are are that great. Like year by year, and also some like really suck. I mean, the Grammys have sucked a bunch of times, and you know, and I think uh, the MTV Music Awards have been sucking for years. But <laughs> that's just that that's, that's just me though. But so, but it's a uh, good year about that. Yeah, I. With with country, like I've said before, I know I respect some of the artists, but I don't like the music. I mean, I've tried and I I can't do it. I really can't. Like I really try to give it a fair shot and kind of be clear minded. But I was like, done. <laughs> it, it's certainly not for everyone, and I don't think that the movement towards bro country will uh, get any more. It shouldn't be recruiting a lot more fans. I think they need to step away. Just step away <laughs> from the bro country. <laughs> bro country. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that happened. Uh, I was, I'm going to be uh, doing posting the another installment of the top 20 remaining movies of 2014, and one of those is coming out this weekend. Interstellar, which is directed by Christopher Nolan, before brought us the Batman 
Mandalorian trilogy. Uh, this is basically Matthew McConaughey uh, going into space to save humanity and you know, has to leave his family as a result. 